Good morning and welcome to New Orleans. It is such a privilege to be asked to come up here and speak at a conference like this. Who would ever thought 12 years ago when I started my journey I would ever be here today? So I'm hoping I can share some information with you that will help you realize how far we've come in the 12 years I've been on my journey. So I'm going to start with uh, my journey here. In 2007, I received an order from a lender who said, we want you to go out and do a final inspection on a new construction. You didn't do the appraisal, but we need for you to do the final inspection. When I got to the house, I was met by a lady who was also the builder and the homeowner, Beth Canton of Canton Builders out of Port Charlotte, Florida. Beth said, the first thing she said to me is, you do know this house is green, don't you? And by the look on my face, she knew I had no clue what she was talking about. So Beth said, I'll tell you what, you come on in and I'll tell you what makes my home green. Now before I went to the dark side and became an appraiser, I worked for a production builder. So I knew a little bit about co-building, I knew plans and specs, I did a lot of new construction. So Beth took me in and started telling me about all these things behind her wall. And being the skeptic that most appraisers are, I said to her, how can you prove what's behind your walls? I can't see what's behind your walls, and how do I know that your house is energy efficient and it's going to save you $125 a month? You know, appraisers are just skeptics, and we're just supposed to be that way. So she said, okay, come over here and I'll show you. So she came over to a desk and pulled out a whole stack of documents. The first document she handed me was a HERS rating report. First time ever I had seen a HERS report. Now at that point in my career, I had been appraising for 27, 26 years, and I was also teaching appraisal courses for the Appraisal Institute. Never did I hear the word HERS or see a rating on a, on a home in 26 years. Now you all have been rating houses by 12 years at that point. So where were you? Were you in a silo somewhere? I was in my silo and you were in yours. I'm a farm girl. Silos are for farming. So let's get out of our silos and work together on this. So as we talked a little further, I said to, to Beth, Beth, did you give this HERS report to the first appraiser, the appraiser that appraised the house? And I could tell by the look on her face, she had no clue why she should do that. And she goes, well, why in the world would the appraiser need it? That was a light bulb moment for both of us. We realized that both of us had information that could make the, the knowledge of energy efficient homes and green homes grow. So we decided to go forward and try to train our local market about energy efficient homes, about HERS ratings, about valuations, about how to market them. So she and I did some uh, local seminars with some appraisers in the field and I kept asking her a lot of questions about HERS ratings because in the HERS report there's a lot of information that would be valuable to the appraiser to understand. Valuable for the lender who's making a loan on it. So she said, well you need to meet Dennis and Charlotte Troyer out of Venice, Florida. They're HERS raters and they'll, they'll give you all the information you need. So Dennis and Charlotte were great people. I would call them about, I'd see something in a report, didn't understand the language. I would call them and they would give me the information I needed. So they helped me get to a point where I felt comfortable dealing with other appraisers and teaching them about HERS ratings and what it meant to the, to the home, to the cost of the home, the benefit of indoor air quality. Uh, I learned a lot of language I didn't know before. So with that, um, Dennis and, and Charlotte, said, you need to meet uh, Steve Baden of ResNet. And I said, well, who's ResNet and what, who is Steve Baden? <coughs> Steve, where are you? I'm going to throw you under the bus, but I'm going to pull you back out, okay, without very many tire marks. So hang in there. So um, they said, told me ResNet trains HERS Raiders. So Steve can give you a lot of information, maybe some graphics for your seminars. So I said, okay. So um, I called Steve Baden, left some messages, sent him some emails. Steve didn't return my calls. Didn't return my email either. So I 
fast forward a little bit, and um, I run into uh, Christy Matthews of Advanced Energy, and Advanced Energy signed me on as a consultant to help them do some education. And Advanced Energy introduced me to Tim Carter of uh, Georgia Power. Uh, Tim's out there somewhere today. And so Tim, uh, Tim and Christy and I were at a conference, an HPC conference in Arizona. Great conference, and one of my first conferences, I believe, that I had attended. And um, I was complaining, whining to Tim and Christy about this steep aid and won't return my phone calls or my emails. And Tim says, well, Sandy, we're, we're taking Steve and his wife to dinner tonight. Why don't you come? I said, well, I'd love to come. So uh, I went to dinner that night, and uh, Christy and Tim and I were there first. And so when Steve and his wife walks in, Tim introduces us, and I stick my hand out. He sticks his hand out. And so I said, so you're the St Steve Baden who won't return my phone calls or my emails. <laughs> now, in the past 12 years, I've learned a little more diplomacy. <laughs> a little. Steve took it very well. The look on his face was shock. And Tim and Christy wanted to dive under the table. And, but the next thing Steve did changed the whole direction of my career. He went, he pulled out of his pocket a card. He wrote on the back of that card, and he handed me the card, and he said, here's my personal cell phone number. I'll give it out if he ever gets, makes me mad. I'll make it public. But he says, you call me anytime, and I will return your calls. I promise I will. And sure enough, he's a man of his word. He has returned my calls. Every time I've called, I try not to bug him too much, but I always get an answer. If he doesn't have the answer, he'll find somebody who will. So that, then after we got to know each other, he invited me to a ResNet conference. And that, I've been here nine years, uh, I think, to nine conferences so far. And that has begun to uh, grow my knowledge about Hearst ratings, about how you build homes, about building science, and it's helped me to pull in my colleagues in the real estate industries to make us all work better together. We can't be in silos anymore. So with that, I'm going to move on to some of the things that happen out of this. Uh, my slides are not moving forward. Oh, here we go. All right. So one of the first things that I, that I worked on, at working on these appraisals, I realized that there was a lot of stuff I had to write because the appraisal forms didn't address energy efficiency in any detail or green features. So I thought, well, I need to write an addendum. So I wrote this little addendum, drafted it, it was one I used myself. And I knew that this was something every appraiser could use. And the best place for it to be would be with the Appraisal Institute. So I took my draft to the Appraisal Institute and I said, would you all publish this? This is something appraisers could use. And I have to give the leadership a lot of credit. They agreed, so a lot of people looked at it. And that addendum could not have happened without a lot of you industry people out there. Because a lot of you gave me input on what was important, what was not important, and you helped me translate your language. That was the other thing that's really difficult for appraisers is you're building science. The first time you told me about an envelope, I'm thinking you're mailing me something. I mean, that was not language that appraisers knew. So I, had to, I wanted to commit uh, an addendum that would standardize the language so that when a realtor, an appraiser, a homeowner, a builder, or we were talking the same language. So that's, that's one of the major things that I wanted to do with the addendum. Well, it is growing in popularity. We're seeing it used all over as brag sheet, for the homeowner. It's being attached to MLSs to let our homeowners know, potential buyers know that this is a special home, has special features, has a HERS rating on it. Um, it's also used by um, uh, builders to communicate with the appraiser that they, they're building something different. The other big thing I wanted is the secondary mortgage market requires the appraiser who, uh, to be competent or have requisite knowledge before they accept an assignment. If this green addendum goes along with the sales contract for the builder, it notifies the lender that this is a special property. You need to hire somebody who has knowledge of this property type. 
So that's another uh, major thing that has happened in the market with the addendum. And then down on the bottom there, on, the, on the, your left side of the screen, the Appraisal Institute developed a um, Valuation of Sustainable Buildings Professional Development Program. That the first large educator, the premier educator, I like to say, of appraisers in the real estate industry. And this, this uh, professional development program has courses to teach appraisers about energy efficiency, about green programs, about the benefits of indoor air quality, of uh, energy efficiency. So appraisers that take these courses and pass the exams are listed on the green registry. Now take note of that. If you're a, if some of these first time raters that are here, you're new to the business, these are resources you need to share with your builders. Let them know that there are things out there to help them. You need to be the source of the source. So if they have a lender that doesn't have anybody on their list that's a, that's a green, that in, understands green or energy efficiency, tell them about the green registry. It's open to the public. They can go there, click on their state, and find out all the people that have taken the courses and passed the exams. And then the upper left there, you'll see the book called Residential Green Valuation Tools. Remember I said you all have been praising or rating homes for 12 years when I first discovered you? Well, in my 26 years as an appraiser, I had never read anything in the textbooks about a HERS rating. <laughs> had no clue what it was. So this was the first book written to appraisers, to realtors, to builders. It even addresses energy raters in there, and it addresses your HERS rating. So this is a, the book that is published by the Appraisal Institute. So as you can see, I, I haven't done all this by myself. I've had a, the great backing from the Appraisal Institute, and we have our CEO here today, Jim Ameren, and Stephen Wagner. And I want to give Stephen Wagner, our 2019 president, a shout out. He is the first, pres the first president, first officer of the Appraisal Institute to be listed on the Green Registry. So, please thank you. <laughs> And then well, I'm going to move forward a little more and show you how collaboration happens. When we, move, when we move forward together, things happen. I was asked to speak at the Federal Code Conference in uh, Nashville. CR Hero, I don't know if CR is, CR is here, and Joan Glickman of DOE suggested I should come and speak on a panel there. And one of the first things I was asked at that conference by one of the code folks is, why would an appraiser come to a code meeting? You see, they were in a silo too. If an appraiser doesn't understand code, why are we appraising houses putting dollar values on it? <coughs> so uh, Maria Ellingson of uh, Building Code uh, Assistance Project uh, wanted to meet me there. She wanted to draft this brochure for new home builders to help them understand what Sandy Adamatis calls the borrower's bill of rights in the appraisal and lending process. So we, we sat down at that code conference and drafted this up. And I said, well, really, to get this out and to give it meaning, we need to get the industry to, to brand it. So we went to the Appraisal Institute, and right away they said, yes, we will brand this. We will push it out. National Association of Home Builders, uh, let's see, HPC, and National Association of Realtors have all branded this brochure which takes the builder or the home, the uh, realtor or the uh, retrofit contractor through what their rights are, what they can provide to the appraiser, to the, to the loan officer, what they can say. It also tells them what to expect when you go to a, to a lender. And there's a lender there on the right-hand side, and at the top it says lender. The builder, raters take this to your builder. The builder should be putting this on his letterhead and putting it with your sales contract, and when the borrower goes to the lender, it identifies to the lender, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Lender, I know you're required to hire a competent appraiser, and by the way, here's where you can find some, and it gives them a link to the Green Registry. So it's another resource that you can give your builders and be the value-added HERS rater. Next, I wanna talk a little bit about some of our friends in the room. Uh, the Appraisal Institute, the National Association of Home Builders, the Realtors Association, uh, a group of people have been working with the secondary mortgage market 
trying to get them to clarify some of their, their guidelines. And I want to say that FHA or HUD was the first one to clarify their guidelines. To say that to value energy efficiency, you can, if you do not have sales, you can use the cost, less depreciation, or you can use an income approach. Well, Raiders, we can't do an income approach without having the energy savings. That's where you come in. Do you see how you flow into that mortgage piece? So it, FHA has clarified it, made it very clear in their guidelines. And that was in 2016. And then I'll say Freddie Mac, and we have six of those folks here today, have clarified their guidelines. They lay it out that if there are no sales in the market with that feature, you can use cost, less depreciation, or the income approach. So that has been clarified. Now we're still working with some of the other folks to get them to make theirs more clear. That has always been, those have always been techniques we were allowed to use, but some of the underwriters or lenders would say, oh no, if you don't have a sale, you can't give it value. So if you hear that in the market, you, if we don't have sales, we can't give it value, that's a myth. That's, that's, not, that's a, an appraiser without a toolbox. And then I want to say that we do have some mortgage products out there that are available, but very rarely given or offered to a borrower. There are four products here. We have the home style mortgage that Fannie Mae offers, which is for existing homes, or you can use it for new homes, where you can uh, finance energy efficiency features in a home. So ask your lender, do you offer these products? They're out there and they're available but they're not promoting them like they should be. Green Choice Mortgages was, is a Freddie Mac product that was announced earlier this year. This is a great product this, that you need to ask your lenders about. Tell your builders there are these special products out there. Energy Efficient Mortgage, or you'll hear them referred to as an EEM. I think that one's probably to date, I may be wrong, but I would say that's probably the most used one is the FHA or HUD one. And um, VA has a mortgage, an energy efficient mortgage, but it's not used very often either. So I think we'll see some changes moving forward if we all work together to let the lenders and let secondary mortgage market know that, that we need more of these products pushed out there for us. And um, Steve has already mentioned the uh, database that's open to the public now. This was a huge step forward, and I know that um, the leadership of, of ResNet and the leadership of the Appraisal Institute worked together to try to get this implemented. Now there's a place that a potential home buyer, uh, an appraiser, a realtor, uh, a builder, anybody can go to and click on an address and find out what the HERS rating is. That was the first step that ResNet made, which was a great move forward, because appraisers had no access to this data. Neither did realtors or other folks. The other thing that's a benefit, tell your builders. Now, if you're not doing a HERS rating, people can go to this database and find out that your homes are not rated. So your competition may be rating their homes and they're gonna show up here. So which home are they gonna buy? The one that they had the most knowledge about. Knowledge will give people the right to make a better decision. So that was open to the public. It was a great step forward. And then, as Steve mentioned, we now have uh, an agreement with the Appraisal Institute and ResNet. We have the Special Appraisal Portal. Now this portal is a, is a huge step forward for the appraisers, for the residential appraisers, because we have um, access to a little more data than is possible on that public registry. And as uh, Steve mentioned, um, we can go to that public registry I mean, to the appraisal portal and get more information. This is just a little clip of what we see. I'll give you a, a local story that happened to me. I live in Punta Gorda, Florida. It's a little town, about 18,000 uh, population. And we do have new construction going on. And I did a search in my MLS, which has great green fields. They aren't populated, but we have great green fields. Okay. We even have a HERS rating I can search by range. So I went into my MLS and I did a search for all the HERS rated homes in the last five years, whether they were sold or listed. In my, my market, I did a little um, box on the map to make sure I'm covering Punta Gorda. And I knew where the new homes were. 
My, my search comes back to the MLS. No houses are rated with hers. So I go to the portal and I did the same area, the same years, five years, and I came up with 200 houses with a hers rating. So you see how important this portal is to me? The MLS doesn't give me that data, but I can go here now, and you see the green button in the upper right hand corner? I can click that button and download that information into an uh, Excel spreadsheet. Then I can pull all my sales or listings from the MLS into that spreadsheet and merge them. And then I can begin to, to do studies or, or to match up sales with HERS ratings and without HERS ratings to see if they sell for more. That's how we extract value from the market. So this was a huge step forward and I give a lot of credit to both of the leadership of the Institute and ResNet. So let's move forward with when we have data that's available to appraisers, we can do studies and publish studies that will tell us how much more are people willing to pay for energy efficient homes or homes that are green rated. There are five appraiser driven studies here and I am very proud to say I was involved in some way in all five of these and they're in different parts of the country. But I will tell you that these appraiser driven studies, we had very limited data because it's, it's, you, the data is just not readily accessible. So I'm hoping in 12 more years when I'm sitting out there in the audience and there's some young whippersnapper up here talking like me, that we'll have lots more data so we can really solidly say that we have great sales price premiums for homes that are better built, homes that are healthier, more comfortable, homes that are cost us less per month. And I noticed that uh, Virgin in Virginia, we did the Pearl National Certified Home Study um, in 2017. And I think we had about 36 pair data sets in there. The appraiser driven studies pretty solidly show between two and 5% in all those studies. Sales price premium for an energy efficient home or green home over one that is not a code, that one that would be a code built home. So that's pretty good data with five, in five different areas of the country. But Pearl, I know, that, I know there's going to be a new announcement, a collaboration between Pearl National Home Certification and ResNet. So I think that's going to be a great step forward. Pearl has a great uh, business model where they train realtors in their market and they do a great job in um, getting education out there before they blank in the market with their, their brand. So let's move on to the studies that have been done by academia, because some, some of you folks come from academia. What does an appraiser know? You know, academia is much smarter than we are. So let's see where their, their studies fall. We've got two here. Their studies fall right in line with where our appraiser studies fall. So they're using much larger data sets, but I guarantee you that their data sets don't have the detail in them that our appraiser data sets do. Our data sets are smaller, but we dig into, we call the buyers, and we call it selling broker and the, real, uh, the listing broker when we do our studies, where these are pulled from public record. And you know how accurate public record is? And public record shows your hers rating too, right? So that's, that's why I think our appraiser studies are a much better um, view of what the market's doing. But I'm a little prejudiced on that. This is a, a picture I thought was very telling. It was sent to me a couple weeks ago. It came from Craig Foley out of Boston, Massachusetts. Craig is a, um, a dynamite uh, realtor. He gets the green, he gets the energy efficiency, he can talk to you for days. When he and I are in the room, nobody else can talk. Just the way it is. He sent me this picture. This, he had a, a buyer call him and say, I want to look at one of your listings. So when he shows up at the house, the buyer shows up with his own infrared camera. The buyer wasn't a builder, the buyer wasn't an energy rater, but he shows up with an infrared camera and that's what he used on every house he looked at. <laughs> Our buyers today are very tech savvy. If builders would just put, as soon as their windows are in, put a big sticker up that says projected HERS rating of 30, when people driving by look at that and they see a HERS 30 in the window, if they don't know what HERS is, they'll look it up. They have smartphones, they'll put it in there and they'll find out about you. It starts the conversation. Those are resources you need to be giving out to your, 
to your clients and be the value added uh, hers rater. It was kind of interesting. Steve and I did not coordinate. He just told me I had 30 minutes and I wanted an hour and a half. He said no. So anyway, we did not coordinate, but I did was doing some research or reading a book on, on Winston Churchill. So I saw a quote in his book that I thought was very interesting and I kind of turned the words around to fit today's standards. Winston Churchill said, um, we shape our buildings and later our buildings shape us. So I turned that around. We brand our buildings today, don't we? They're, they're green rated, they're a HERS building, they're a Pearl <coughs> building, they're an NGBS building, uh, and later our buildings shape us. So I have a question for you. What is that building, how is it going to brand you in 15 years? Is your client, the builder, going to be branded as the premier builder? He built me a good house, it was branded, has a low energy rating on it, and it has proven to be accurate. Or are they going to brand you with something that you don't want your children and grandchildren to know about? So think about it. What we do in the field today, the work that we do, brands us later in the future. That's how I got the name the Green Queen. I have five green dresses. So, <laughs> so people ask me a lot, why are you so, so passionate about this? My husband sitting down here on the front row, he told me after four years, he's, I lost so much income because I was doing so much volunteer work in this area. He said, either you make this a living or you get out of it. <laughs> so I've had to start making some money. But why am I so passionate still today? I can tell you why. I've been in a lot of houses in my career as an appraiser. It's been 38 years now. And I've seen a lot of things that just make me sick. And the most recent one that really sparked me on was going into a home in northern part of the country where it was really cold. It was in the winter of 2017. And the, the temperatures were predicted to be, be below zero that evening. And I walked into this house, and there sat a single mom who was a nurse with three children, and they've all got coats on and blankets over them. They have a little small electric heater in the room, and lights were on, and the electric heater was going. And I said, uh, did your furnace go out? The lady said, no, but I got my gas bill, and it was $595 for one month. My rent's due, and it's $550. It's pay my rent or pay the gas bill, and they turn my gas off. That was the week it was to be below zero all week long. No one should be living like that here today. The lady fell through the cracks. She weighed about $2,000 more than necessary to get help. She had a son with asthma. And hit because of the house they were renting, had water in the basement, and the management company told them that it was normal to have water standing in the basement. And they were having, elect they were having getting to the point where he was going to need two inhalers a day. And it was costing her a fortune for health care. Why am I so passionate? What you all do today is help builders build something better than that. We can build houses that make people feel more comfortable, that they can live healthier, and they can pay their utility bill. The good news is that that woman got into a house that had, been, had a, an older home, but had been in retrofit recently. Since it, she's been in there a year now, and since she's been in there, she's been able to pay her utility bill on time, her rent on time. The highest utility bill she's had is $100 with three kids, and her son no longer needs an inhaler. So why am I patient? Why am I passionate about this? That's why I'm passionate about it. So with that, I hope that you will be as passionate as I am 
And I hope that you will have a brand. I went into a, I did a keynote last year at a builder's conference in uh, Iowa. And I went down through the, the, the room and I asked builders, what is your brand? What would you say if I asked you that? Are you just a HERS raider? Just a HERS raider? Are you just there for a job? Or are you passionate about what you do? Are you willing to get out of your silo and work with others? Are you a HERS raider or an, and an energy consultant? Or are you a HERS specialist with a value-added service? When you can be the source of the source and you can offer things to your builders that they're not aware of, things that we've talked about here today, things that, that uh, uh, Steve's talking about going forward in the future. I'm excited to see where you're going to be in 12 years. I'm excited to see where you're going to be in two. So together, we can, we can do better. You can be the super hers raider. You don't have to wear the red, red cape, but you can be the super hers raider. You can be a value-added raider. Charlotte and um, Dennis Schroer, they were great. They, to this day, I can still call them. Are, is Dennis here today? Sometimes he's here. But they, they, they answered all my questions. How many raiders in the room have had a call from an appraiser? I want to see more hands next year, okay? The other thing, how many of you raiders have gone out to uh, sales, real estate sales offices or to appraisal groups and offered to give them a presentation on what you do? How many? Great, I want to see more hands next year. It was at a light bulb moment when I had a HERS raider come into an appraisal class, set up a blower door test on the room, and then I had the appraisers walk around the room and feel around the windows and the baseboard. That was a light bulb moment because before that, the skeptics that we are said, oh, that's just a raider's just somebody walks through and makes, you know, it's just their opinion. No, it's not. It's not just your opinion, it's diagnostically tested, right? So that was a light bulb moment for appraisers. So those are things you can do in the market. Get out of your silos, mix with the rest of the real estate industry. I, I admire Freddie Mac for coming to, to, to the conference this time. I think it's your first time here. I think it's great. And I can tell you, Scott and Dan, I've talked with many times on the phone. I, I can pick up the call, uh, phone and call them, ask them a question, and they'll return my call. And I will return their calls as well. We need to work together on this. Hopefully next year you'll see Fannie Mae, VA, I'd love to see VA here. Our veterans deserve better homes. I'd love to see uh, somebody from FHA here as well. So uh, we can work on that together. So. Here are two more resources that you as, as raiders give to your builders. There are two registries, one for appraisers and one for realtors. How can you sell it for more if you don't know what you're selling? I can't tell you the number of times that agents tell me, I didn't put that in the MLS because I don't know how to explain it if the buyer asks me a question. So you need to list them with people who know something about what you're building. And you need to have the appraiser know something about what you're building. So with that, let's move together. I'm going to give you some challenges. Collaborate with the rest of the real estate market. Get involved. Get outside your comfort zone. Become a value-added HERS rater. Promote the total cost of energy efficiency. And, and, and uh, uh, Steve has already talked about that. You heard my story about the, the single mom. We, it's not only paying the rent or not only paying the mortgage payment, it's paying the utility bills. So let's think about that, be a value-added service to the community and move forward together. Together we can make a huge difference in the next 12 years. With that, I thank you for allowing me to be here.